Hi, welcome to this lecture on environmental adaptation of animals. On this second video on thermal relations, we are now thinking on the heat transfer. So if you go outside, you will absorb heat from different sources, but you will also emit heat with different mechanisms. So let's have an example, rabbit and the sunlight. The sun is shining, so there is direct radiation from the sun. And most probably this rabbit is feeling the heat from the sun. But actually the radiation is also reflected from the clouds and all the other material. And there's radiation from the sky, from the bush and from the ground. But this, most probably this uh, rabbit is not sensing. And because the rabbit is endotherm, so it, there is a metabolic heat production to keep the body temperature quite hot. And depending on the temperature of the rabbit and the temperature of the crown, there is conduction. So the direct connection between the rabbit and the crown affects that, okay, either the uh, rabbit is heating the grass and the crown, or the crown is heating the rabbit. Then, on the opposite direction, there is the convection. So, the rabbit is also heating up the air that is surrounding it. But also, if it's very hot day, then the air itself can be heating the rabbit. And because the, there was a radiation from the ground and bush, also there is radiation from this animal. And because it has high body temperature, there's more radiation from this uh, rabbit than from the bush. And because it's getting so huge amount of heat from different sources, and there's also this metabolic rate production, it tries to cool down. And that's usually done with respiration. So when it's evaporating or releasing water from other sources that is getting turning to gases, you can cool down. Or it could be is that okay, if it's getting windy, that will increase drastically the convection and then it might be feeling cool or in winter time cold. So we have four different mechanisms of heat transfer. First of all, we have conduction. And actually that means a microscopic collision of particles. So one particle is giving uh, energy for the next one. So it's, it's moving uh, a little bit more and that means that, okay, it's, it's a heated up. That, and that will give the uh, energy for the next one, that will give the energy for the next one, etc. And that's why you heat the cold crown. Then we have convection, and that's nothing to do with the particles. It's on the bulk movement of the molecules. So, m movement of liquids or the gases. So, you heat the cold air around you. Or if you are swimming, you heat the cold water around you. And then we have evaporation. And that's always doing something with liquids that are turning gases. So you release heat when you are expiration. Or when you have been sweating and the sweat is now evaporating. And then... The most fizzy part is the thermal radiation. Though so it's covering all kind of electromagnetic radiation, but for us the simple example is of course is the sun radiating, this warming our skin. Let's first think that okay, if we have body temperature and the environment, uh, how we can calculate these and uh, the, these different uh, ways of uh, heat transfer and, and, and how we can maintain the body temperature. 
So these thermal reactions can have opposite effects. So the rabbit is getting heat from the sun, but it's giving energy, uh, heat to the ground, etc. So that's why they should be analyzed separately. And if the body temperature is constant, then the sum of the heat gains must be equal in the sum of the heat loses. So if the rabbit is having high metabolic rate, it gets uh, energy from the sun, energy from the ground, energy from the air around it. It must be evaporating more. And in endotherms, usually the body core temperature is different from the out uh, environment. And quite often in, in Arctic areas, it's called, uh, warmer in the body than in the environment. And between the body core and the environment, there's a surface layer or outer layer of the body. And a body surface temperature that is different from the body core temperature. And for example, for humans, in when we are in the office, where the room temperature is about 20 degrees of Celsius, the body temperature is 37. But if we measure it directly from the surface, it's actually 32 degrees Celsius. So the surface temperature is different from the body core, so inside our stomach, for example. So let's start to look more detail on these four different ways of heat transfer. First with these C's, on conduction and convection. So the conduction of the heat is transferred between particles that are not moving anything visible. So the rabbit is heating the grass under it. And the conduction depends on the material that is between the rabbit and the grass and the temperature difference between the rabbit and the grass. So if there's nothing between them, then okay, if it's very cold grass, there's more conduction. So it's losing more heat uh, because there's a larger temperature dip uh, difference. But if there's something between them, then it depends on what is the, the isolating layer. If it's air, it's uh, the con uh, this uh, constant is very low. If it's water, it's very high. And then dependence depends on the thickness of this isolating layer. And this is something that the animals are using. So if there is a non-moving isolating layer, for example, air that is not moving, then the air is very good isolator. And that's why in the Arctic areas, we have furry animals. So we are minimizing the conduction by increasing the thickness of, of, of the uh, 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 isolating layer where there's air that is not moving. Or if you are going in the, in the supermarket to find a good, proper winter coat for Arctic environment, you most probably get something that is having a thick layer. So it's quite thick jacket because there's a layer of air inside it. Then the convection, it, it depends on, on the, on the motion, motion of air or water. And if the body parts are estimated as cylinders, we can calculate it quite easily. So it depends on, again, on the temperature difference between the en environment and the body surface and then it depends on the speed of this, of this motion and how large is the cylinder. So if the wind speed is high, then this convection is high. So you are losing a lot of heat. And if your the cylinder is large, you are losing much less heat. And that's why the fingers with the small diameter are getting called easiest. Then we have evaporation. So when we have liquid, we are releasing 
energy by turning the liquid into gas. And that's how we can release, and when we are releasing energy, we are releasing heat. But then it depends on the, on the temperature. So the latent heat vaporization depends on the temperature, and in physiological temperatures, it's about uh, uh, 2400 uh, joule per gram, so 200, 2000 joule per gram. And that's why it's, it's a quite effective mechanism to cool down the body. And of course, that's why we are using it not only when we are re uh, uh, having the respiration, but also as a sweat or when the dogs are panting. Then the most fuzzy part is the thermal radiation. It's depending on the electromagnetic spe spectrum. So we have all kind of electromagnetic radiation and part of it we can see because it's in visible wavelengths. And that's why we see it as a light. And if we would check that, okay, what kind of uh, electromagnetic radiation comes from the sun, you can see that there's all kind of wavelengths, not only those that we see in different colors, but also wavelengths that are way longer than those that we can see. So we, the, the sun is all the time emitting uh, ultraviolet light, but also infrared light. But if we have a, a grill, you can see that there is a light, some light coming from there is a red light. So it's it's emitting uh, electromagnetic radiation that you can f uh, see as a red light, but it's also emitting infrared. And so it means that, okay, because the grill is not so hot as the sun, that's why it's, it's uh, not emitting uh, 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 wavelengths that could be seen in other colors. And then we have animal with the surface layer uh, temperature, maybe 30 degrees Celsius, it's also emitting some thermal radiation, but not something that we can see in the visible wavelengths. And as you can see that the shorter wavelengths are emitted from the hot sources, and they also emit more radiation. But animals are emitting it, but also all other kind of material. So this electromagnetic radiation is emitted from all objects in infrared wavelengths and it can be used, for example, in this jackrabbit, there is a circulation. You can actually see from the uh, airs that, okay, there is a, a, a blood vessels going and it's increased the circulation in the air to lose the heat without losing the water. So it's nothing to do with evaporation now. But it also works in the other direction. So we can absorb the radiation. It, we can increase it by with a dark pink when, when there is a limiting reflection. And that's why the polar pair has a black skin. It tries to get warmer, but not too warm. Then the radiation comes also from the animal. So the radiant temperature in the clear sky, even in, in, in a hot desert, is about minus d 3 degrees of Celsius. So that's why it's, the night sky is a quite large energy sink where the radiation is absorbed from the animals. Though, so the bird is releasing radiation that is absorbed in the sky. But it also affects on the tree. So the tree is getting energy because of the radiation when the bird is flying by the 
the tree. But of course, that's not going to increase the temperature of the tree a lot. Thank you.